Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Samantha Hildebrandt. I am a type 1 diabetic as of February 18th, 2021. So I am getting closer to my three-year anniversary. And today I want to talk about the methods that we can use to take our insulin. So the cool thing about having type 1 diabetes in 2023 is that there are so many different ways that we are able to take our insulin or manage our insulin. And every single way is good for someone in some way. So when I was first diagnosed, I was immediately put on insulin pens. I'm pretty sure that is what they do with everyone when you're first diagnosed, just because nobody knows what type 1 diabetes is and being on an insulin pen is kind of the easiest way to start with type 1 diabetes. So I was immediately put on Basiglar for my long lasting insulin, which is the 24 hour insulin, you know, that lasts all day. So I take it once a day and it lasts 24 hours. And then I was put on Humalog, which is my fast acting insulin, which I take before I eat food. Both of those were amazing. I have been on both of those for two years. I just recently switched to Traceba for my long lasting, mostly just because my insurance accepts Traceba now. My insurance didn't accept it before, so that's why I was put on Basiglar, but I started having highs in the morning, and I talked to my endocrinologist about it, and she said, all right, let's try to switch to Traceba now that your insurance covers it to see if that will help. The reason she recommended Traceba is because it actually lasts a little bit longer than 24 hours. I want to say it's like 27 to 28 hours is how long it lasts. So it will help with, you know, that morning high. And I know it's a trend. A lot of, a lot of type 1 diabetics have that morning high. And so we switched to, to Traceba. And so far, so great. I actually really like Traceba. I do notice a difference in the morning. I am not running as high as I used to be. It really just depends also on what I eat the night before, but I try. Of course, this doesn't always happen, but I try to eat a more balanced meal at night mostly just because I don't want to deal with my blood sugars at night. I mean, that's the worst if you have to wake up at like 2 a.m. and take insulin, especially for me because I'm on pen. So I have to like get up, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to turn on the light, I have to give myself a shot to do that correction. And it's just a pain in the butt. So I would rather eat a more balanced meal, like a lower carb. I don't even like saying lower carb because it's not necessarily lower carb because I'll still eat rice. I will still eat sweet potatoes or something that has carbs, but it's just more of a healthy balanced meal, which does help manage my blood sugars overnight. So because I'm also doing that, because I'm eating that, that balanced meal for dinner, my blood sugars do tend to be around 110 in the morning when I wake up, which is awesome because they used to be about like 130 when I was on Basiglar or higher. It would maybe be 160 some days. So it's really, really nice to have that change just from switching my insulin. There are also some other options out there for insulin. I don't really know what they are because I've only been on Basiglar and Traceba, but obviously there are more options. So if you're thinking about switching because maybe you do have those morning highs like I do, like talk to your doctor, see what your insurance accepts, see if there's other ways you can fix maybe this issue. For example, like me and my endocrinologist, when I was on Basiglar, we debated doing two shots of Basiglar versus one. So instead of like, for example, I take seven units of Traceba, I took nine units of Basiglar. Um, so we'll just say that for the sake of this example, nine units of Basiglar, instead of taking nine up front in the morning, which is when I took it, I would do four in the morning and five at night to help with that morning high. So 
there are several different ways that you can try to help manage that morning high or whatever your case may be. Just talk to your endocrinologist about it. Try to come up with a solution that can maybe be better for you or I don't know. There's just so that's what's so cool actually about type 1 diabetes these days is there's so many different ways to like manage your blood sugars. So I wanted to show you my Humalog pen. I do keep it in this <laughs> snack baggie and I love it. I do get made fun of on occasion for keeping it in this, but like I have a small purse. Like I have, this is my purse. So like, you know, I, I, I need to be able to fit that in there. And so I like it because I just carry also like my, a couple needles in here and my pen and it just makes it easier than some of the cases out there but this is my pen so i am on humlog this is actually the adult pen which i don't like i prefer using the humlog junior pen because it's in half increments versus like one unit increments and this this is a one unit increment the adult one is one unit and i honestly just don't take that much insulin or i don't have to take that much insulin and so sometimes like if I have to have to do a correction bolus, one unit is just way too much. Like it's just way too much, especially because I'm just really active. So, you know, sometimes I would rather take a half unit and then go for a walk. But sometimes if I take a full unit and go for a walk, if my blood sugar is high, like I will just start skyrocketing down. So I have to be careful. But we're getting back on the junior pen. My pharmacy, for some reason, started giving me regular pens. I don't know why. Obviously, I'll take it <laughs> because it's insulin, but also annoying when I have to do a correction bolus. Or even for food, sometimes I'd rather take a half unit than a full unit, but do what you got to do. You know what I mean? So I carry this around with me everywhere I go. It's always in my purse. If I happen to switch purses, don't forget to switch <laughs> and don't forget your insulin in that purse or a backpack or whatever the case may be. But I carry this with me everywhere, obviously, because I don't know when I'll be eating next. I do love pens because they're easy to carry around. Like it can fit in my bag very easily <laughs> and it's really, really nice. And I personally like pens for two reasons. One, I really do like the fact that I don't have to have anything else in my body. I already wear a Dexcom and I just don't really want to have another device on my body. And so that is one reason that I really like pens. The other reason is I just don't take that much insulin. Like I think the most Humalog, this is long lasting aside, the most Humalog I've ever taken in a day, probably 12 or 13 units. So I don't take that much insulin. And so sometimes like a pump is just not a good option for me because I just don't take that much. So that is what I choose to do. But the good news is there's so many other ways that you can take your insulin. So there are a lot of different pumps that you can use to manage your diabetes. There are, I would say, two main ones. Most people are on these two types of pumps. So one is the Tandem T-Slim, which is the pump with a tubing. And then there is Omnipod, which is the tubeless pump that you see on people's arms, legs, stomachs, the white casing. I don't know what you call it. So those are two of the main insulin pumps that are on the market. There's also a few more, but I would say pretty much everyone I know is on one of those two pumps. And I personally don't know too much about the pumps just because I am on MDI. I use insulin pens. I am not on a pump. However, I know that a lot of my friends that have type 1 diabetes love their pump. So I love that they love their pump. I love that there are so many ways to take insulin and that we get to choose, which is even cooler. We get to choose the way that we want to manage our type 1 diabetes. So for the Tandem T-Slim, I know a lot of people like it because it's really, really good with automatic bolusing, like very good. And a lot of people are able to control their type 1 diabetes without really worrying about it too much throughout the day because it will automatically correct your blood sugar if it's high, which is really, really cool. I know people love it. The one thing I would say that people don't like is the tube because you do have to connect. For example, if you're putting on your stomach, the tube does connect to the device and you have to wear it like a pager on your pants or 
I don't know, people get really creative with it, which is really cool, but you have to wear that with the tube. And I know some people don't like that, which is why they choose the Omnipod. The Omnipod is the tubeless pump that you wear on your body. So like you literally stick it like, like a Dexcom to your body. And I know you change it every three days because you have to refill it with insulin, your new pod. I don't know actually if that's the same way for the tandem. I think it is, right? Like you have to change your site every three days. So that's something to consider if you're considering going on a pump. Like, do you want one with a tube? Do you want one not with a tube? Now Omnipod does have the looping, which I know is very, very helpful for people because once again, it's similar now to the T-Slim where it will automatically bolus you if you are going high for your blood sugars. So that's really, really cool. I would say the one reason people don't like Omnipod is actually because it's attached to your body. Like it's physically attached to your body and it's kind of big. I mean, it's not big, but like compared to the T-Slim insertion, like the Omnipod is bigger and you do have to change your sights and things like that. So I know that's why people don't like the Omnipod. But once again, like this is just what I've heard on the market because I have never tried either of these pumps. But if you're considering a pump, I would recommend talking to your endocrinologist and maybe talking to a rep from one of these companies. So Tandem Rep or an Omnipod Rep. I hear they're super, super helpful, actually. So if that's something you're interested in, talk to them. I also think reaching out to somebody that's on one of those pumps would be a good idea, too, because they're actually living it, right? Like they are using the pump. They can tell you the good, the bad, the ugly, <laughs> everything about using a pump. I also know that a lot of people do tend to get better A1Cs if they're using a pump. Not always, not always, but I do hear that. Like once they go from pens to a pump, their A1C does go down, which is amazing, right? Like technology is so cool when it works. It's so cool. And the fact that a device is really helping you manage your diabetes is amazing. So those are, I would say, the three main ways that people manage their diabetes, MDI, multiple daily injections, which is what I do, and then the two pumps, Tandem T-Slim and Omnipod. And so if you're thinking about switching, reach out to somebody you know that has it. If you're on a pump now and you're thinking about going back to MDI, feel free to reach out to me. I love MDI personally. I was debating going on a pump because me and my husband are considering having a child within the next year. And I just wanted to make the decision, whatever's best for the baby, honestly, is what I wanted to do. So if that was a pump, I would do it. But after speaking with my endocrinologist, we basically decided that my A1C is already pretty low with MDI. And so I'm just going to stay on it. That's what we decided. <laughs> and so that's what, well, that's what I'm going to do. So if you have questions about MDI, please let me know. If you have questions about any pump and you don't know who to reach out to, let me know because I actually have some friends that use both. So I have a friend that uses Tandem. And I have a friend that uses Omnipod. And I'm sure both of them would love to chat with you. So I hope this was a good conversation about pumps. I do want to get an interview with some specialists for each pump because I don't know that much about them and I would love to learn about the pumps and I would love to share that information with you all as well about each pump. So if you're considering changing, you know the ins and outs of each pump, that'd be really cool to do an interview with someone about both of those. So I know this was a shorter podcast, a shorter video, but I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I'll see you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.